Hey, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, today we're going to have the opportunity to talk to Jeffrey Haupt. Uh, after almost 20 years of law school and practicing law, Jeff Haupt started as an application developer with the city of South Bend. He currently works mostly with Python and databases and some JavaScript and Java. Uh, his message to anyone looking to change what they do for a living is don't wait as long as I did. If you know it's not right, then it's not right. Uh, his message to anyone that's currently working, don't let your profession define you. Be defined how you treat people. Be defined by a positive spiritual vibe. Be defined by titles that really matter. Spouse, parent, sibling, child, friend. Uh, with that, I'd like to welcome Jeff and kick off with the first question. Jeff, what was your first experience in coding? Uh, back in high school, so we're talking 91, 92. I, my first experience was with basic, not visual basic, but just basic. So it literally was uh, um, just a very like functional line by line programming languages, things like loops, classes, none of that existed in basic. So I did that for two years. And then my senior year, I became the teacher's aide for the class because I ran out of programming classes. So that was my first experience. So that was just a class you took? You weren't working in ba basic? Did anyone ever work in basic professionally? Was that a thing? I don't I don't think so. I think it was kind of a stepping tool sort of teaching language to like get you up to speed for like COBOL and Pascal. Uh, Pascal. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I don't, I mean, I'm sure somebody tried to do some things with basic, but I do, uh, I do remember it was, um, you know, called that for a reason, so. Yeah. Do you, do you remember any of the programs you wrote in basic or any of the assignments stick out to you? We did some like graphic stuff. I do remember that. Um, but it was, you know, very like Atari, like original Atari 2600 type uh -huh. of graphics. So, uh, but for the most part, yeah, it was, uh, gosh, so many years ago now <laughs> looking back on it. But um, yeah, I do remember the graphics part of the program. Yeah. So you did that for two years and then you said, what was it a teacher's assistant? Yeah, so yeah, when you were a senior in my high school, if you took like, you know, basically all the classes or whatnot that they would offer, you could become a teaching or a teacher's assistant, which was kind of cool because like the um, second year programming class usually only have like three, four, five students in it. And then the first year programming class during my senior year had like 20, uh, so I pretty much got to work and teach the, uh, the juniors and seniors that were in the second year of the programming class because my teacher was pretty busy with the uh, first year class because it was a combined setting. So that was a very cool feeling was, you know, teaching my peers how to program. And was that a paid position, do you recall? No, it was, I, got, I got one academic credit for it. Okay. So when you graduated high school, what what was your next connection with coding? Uh, so then I went to college right away. Uh, my first year, so second semester, I took C++. Um, and I, I did enjoy that. It's, um, gosh, but now looking back, like comparing Java, Python, JavaScript, even C++ in its current form. Um, you could tell it's programming's definitely gotten, I don't wanna say easier because I think the things you're dealing with are more complex and data-driven, but at the same token, it's it's not as like, it's not as close to the machine level as it used to be or felt like with that version of C++. Um, and I was kind of remember being torn between that and uh, a lot of like statistics and whatnot. And um, so I ended up, more going towards the idea of doing like I, I think I was ahead of my time and that I wanted to be uh, you know a pollster for like um, you know political organizations or like the AP or things like that so I kind of uh, went to uh, political science and uh, math as a minor so I did end up taking more programming classes um, I did something in COBOL um, and then also in Visual Basic, when it was kind of like Visual Basic and uh, 
Um, I think this, yeah, this is actually before Microsoft had the Visual C. Um, so Visual Basic was sort of the, um, the language in the information systems department that they taught at the time. So, um, you know, again, just a few classes here and there. Um, coding just wasn't a, as big of a career. Then a lot of people were doing hardware. There was a lot of like the Microsoft, uh, was it the MCSE, Microsoft Certified System Engineer thing. And coding at that time became like this thing that was getting offshored over to uh, India and different parts of Asia. And it stayed that way for a while. Um, so kind of like the dot-com boom. Uh, but then I also, um, so college for me was 93. Uh, to 98 and I ended up doing a lot of like self-learning in like HTML um, during the whole browser wars thing where like you had to learn like Netscape's version of JavaScript, Microsoft Internet Explorer's version of JavaScript just to run one website. Um, so I think that turned off myself and a lot of other people to this because it's like this just is crap it's never going to work and Fortunately for everybody, we have uh, very good standards now, so we don't have to worry about those crazy um, conditional statements that checks which browser you're on and which JavaScript code to write. So um, a lot of self-learning in college, and then I kind of stepped away from it, um, you know, and then went to the legal uh, route in but I still couldn't quite step away from it because I took a job building an intranet site for a law library to check out um, inner office or inner library loan materials. So uh, sure lived. Was that a, was that a full-time kind of short-term gig that you took on? Uh, well, yeah, I guess it was because I did it in the summer after my first year. So it was full-time for the summer. And then uh, I did it, um, Part time just to keep it up in the next couple semesters after that, um, mm -hmm. but it was kind of funny. I mean, it was uh, you know it was a student aid position, so I was making I think like seven fifty an hour um, mm -hmm. doing this, and but it was yeah, yeah it was fun. Um, you know, here I was trying to you know go to law school, but ultimately still working in what would become my future full time career. Yeah. So you had so you had a career in law for a while, but you always had this kind of passion for coding and tech. And yeah, yeah. So so somewhat recently, you decided you said, "Hey, I'm going to do a boot camp." You did the Prominio boot camp, graduated from there, became a mentor, and then transitioned into full time developer. T tell yep. t talk a little bit about um, the thought process of making that kind of career change mid-career? Uh, to me, it was scary as hell. Um, you know, I, I probably questioned my sanity a few times. I mean, um, you know, not too many lawyers leave the profession, even though a lot of them want to. Uh, so that was definitely one of those things for the moments of what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Um, and Brendan, as you kind of know, I, I kicked the idea around for a while. I stayed a mentor and whatnot as I still maintained my legal job. Uh, not quite sure where I was going to go or if I was going to do this. Um, and then, you know, probably five, six months ago, I settled in um, to the idea that if I'm going to do it, it better be now because, you know, getting in my mid 40s, um, uh, not too many years left to try to you know, play around with whether or not I want to switch careers. So yeah, about five, or maybe even this, now about six months ago, I decided, yes, I do need to do this. And I uh, actually ended up kind of chatting with you and, and Nick about it a, a bit and a few different times about the, the process, the thought of moving towards that career. Uh, some had you and actually, I think Nick B even looked at uh, resume stuff for me just to kind of bring me, uh, Give me more tech focused um, fellow former classmate of mine who's a recruiter, Zach. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember his last name, Zach Beecher. Beecher. Um, you know, he had been a recruiter for Amazon for a bit. So, you know, he also gave me some tips on the resume and the career search. Um, 
but it was cool. I, I was getting um, surprisingly more interviews or more um, once I dialed in and just wasn't just sitting like sending, you know, the Indeed instant resume out. Um, but once I actually really looked at a position, researched the company and really thought like, this is what, yeah, this would be a cool, cool spot. Um, you know, I was actually getting like more hits than I kind of anticipated. Um, I thought I'd run into more obstacles and more questions. Mm -hmm. um, but when I decided on the just staying where I was, but switching departments, I was actually in the interview process for uh, two other uh, companies. Um, both were remote positions, which was kind of cool. Um, and then, uh, you know, then just doing the career switch, I thought, you know, if I could eliminate some of the other obstacles of like starting for a new company, um, you know, just trying to figure out a whole culture versus, hey, I know all these people already because they were one of the departments I represented as a lawyer for the city. Um, so, you know, the first day of my job as a developer, I just literally turned right off the elevator and said a left in my office. So it, it was at least very familiar um, with a lot of things. So that's part of the reason why I went to that uh, particular position over continuing the process with other places. Um, I, I bet a lot of people who are listening are really interested to know, uh, you know, they're in the position you were in maybe six months ago, uh, but now you're, you're on the other side of the wall, so to speak, working full-time as a software developer, application developer. What, tell us about your job. What, what, what did you do today? For example, what, what does an application developer do? So um, the one thing that's kind of fun and also kind of terrifying about the position I'm in is that um, we kind of have to dabble in programming languages that are tied to third-party applications that we buy. So for whatever reason, you know, for a midsize or, you know, smallish city, there just doesn't exist good software packages to run like government, um, you know, administration. Um, part of the reason why I think like, I mean, I, I think IRS is on like some older backend database system, the Department of uh, Defense might even be on parts of their system or on COBOL. Um, you just, there's just not a market for it. Um, so you, we take a lot of things like, for instance, uh, SharePoint, which is more, I think more of a sales team type of program. Mm -hmm. um, we have turned it into a call center uh, sort of ticket management system and that's a headache. <laughs> and so it, it breaks, it doesn't quite work the way we want it to. So we're looking at uh, sort of building our own thing out of the box on that. Um, Another big thing we do as a city, and a lot of cities will do this sort of thing, is uh, GIS-related software. We have a team of uh, two people that handle just the GIS, like the geometry and the, you know, the shape side of things. But we're responsible for like, you know, the database cleanup, the um, Python, JavaScript side of making things work. So one of the big projects I'm on right now is is finding ways to um, route our trash, our solid waste pickups so that they're more efficient and drivers aren't just kind of going by the knowledge of like their street memory instead of like, no, here's the most efficient route factoring in construction, factoring in other issues. Um, so we've got it probably about three quarters of the way down, which is cool. So that was my first dive into Python. And mm -hmm. now I am having to really kind of dive into the JavaScript side of it because what we are trying to do now is Basically, we're tracking the truck based off of a um, latitude longitude point, and we're doing that on a 20 second interval. So we always kind of see this truck moving on our maps. Um, and when the driver wants to reroute, because sometimes you know they'll have to they'll hit some, and then they'll have to go dump at the landfill. Um, we want to give them the ability to reroute based on where they're at. And give them, you know, the next best route from wherever they're at. They take a lunch break, um, you know. Now they're ready to start back up, reroute again. So that's one of the bigger projects I've been kind of dealing with. That involves the uh, 
quite a bit of, uh, it's a Python library called ArcPy, which is tied to a, a GIS system called ArcGIS. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do a lot of that. And then we do, uh, right now, we're kind of diving in first time into the JavaScript side of it um, to be able to sort of have this interactive map that they can have on a tablet to see like, you know, what's at the stop, what's, you know, is it, are there extra pickups that need to be done? Um, so there, there's a lot of things kind of going into it, but it's really cool because uh, the department heads are super excited about what we've built so far. Um, so this is pretty neat to be able to see like, hey, this code I'm doing is actually going to be useful and, and try to find ways for like, uh, our drivers are unionized. So they get like incentive bonuses, things like that for a certain amount of pickups per hour. So they're excited about the idea of having optimized routes. So, you know, it, it's it's pretty what neat. Are to they, see what like, do they have today in place? Is there anything in place today? Yeah, so again, we're using a software that's not geared towards it. It's called Routeware. Um, so that software is more towards like, you know, long haul trucking companies, but yet we've, you know, hacked our way to make it work for the city of South Bend. Um, and so sometimes I feel like that's a big chunk of the job is finding a hack that works <laughs> and then trying to like, as long as it doesn't break, we sort of clean it up a little bit every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so they're using a software that doesn't really give them any sort of interaction, uh, doesn't tell them, you know, the best way to, you know, tackle the orders or, uh, or the route um, and doesn't really sort of just you know, give them any indication of what's being picked up, that there's extra pickups to be done. Um, so we're really, really excited that we're able to do this and be able to kind of make this, uh, you know, sort of a, a, my first real larger project out of the gate. And it's something you guys, it sounds like you're building this custom more or less from the ground up. Well, it's kind of, it's like, again, because we're using it with our, or um, ArcGIS, mm -hmm. uh, Graphical Information Systems application. We're mm -hmm. building it ground up using that as sort of our, our sort of our foundation. And then, you know, the application that we're putting in the place is being built on top of that. So we're, again, we're stuck with the constraints of Python and JavaScript for them, which is fine. It's uh, to uh, JavaScript that was comfortable with Python I didn't dive into it until this job. So, um, but I'm excited to learn it. It's a uh, pretty, pretty straightforward language to learn. And quite frankly, um, if you learn Java or JavaScript first, Python's a breeze. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so we're, this is a ground up, but the ground's already kind of nice and solid for us. Um, to, so that you talked a lot about kind of some of the bigger projects you're working on, but I, I still have a feeling some of the people listening, they kind of want to know, all right, it's Tuesday, September 14th. You show up to work, you open your laptop at 8.30 in the morning. You know, what what does your morning look like? What are some of the things that you're actually doing? Sure. Um, you know, if you want, I can share the screen, just kind of go through some of the sure. some of the stuff we use in place here. Um, Yeah, and Jeff and I talked about this before. He did get permission from his employer to share some. Yeah, cool they they were excited to have him do it. They are so it's pretty cool. So let me open up my remote uh, desktop. Um, all right. So while, while you're bringing that up, I'll just uh, for everyone on the chat. Uh, you can start putting questions in the chat now, and then we'll uh, leave time towards the end to to uh, have Jeff answer those. So I apologize because I'm going to be looking at a different screen and not really focusing on the, my camera. But um, no problem. So, um, are you able to see this uh, Azure DevOps page? Yes. Yes. Okay. Dev.azure.com. Yep. yep. So this is our kind of our Kanban boards, our sort of agile way to we manage projects. Um, you know, we applications, project portfolio. Oh, <laughs> that's embarrassing. Uh, let's 
see if that uh, now down for maintenance okay. maybe yeah oh. there we go um so this is kind of our main place where we build things out at um we use uh different types of boards but the sprints are sort of our big thing for tracking uh various projects um should be set up for me already um so when i said literally like we touch a lot of different things i mean it um i got i made the mistake of mentioning that i knew wordpress and cms systems mm -hmm. in my uh, interview and so now um i am apparently the webmaster that gets to handle all the php and mysql and uh, updates i fortunately know i don't have to dive into the wordpress part of it and actually try to make it look pretty um these are all built by somebody else and then but right now i am trying to one of the things that i'm working on is um working on uh pipelines in azure that are basically um they can almost become automated releases for different uh just updates that um wordpress will put out or anything like that so i I, I prefer the command line updates. Um, so, you know, so then Drupal is a different one we use for our police website. So uh, once I kind of figure this one out, I'm going to be moving on to that one. Those are like small maintenance projects, no big hurry. So their um, they're priority is pretty low. Like I spent a little bit of time on this one yesterday, but um, for the most part, it was kind of, yeah, I didn't get to touch it today because we were working on other things um so this is just we have these things called discovery so we're basically trying to um this is me teaching uh i'll be teaching this guy how to build uh python toolboxes in this uh geo database that's that arcgis system so so can we just pause on that yeah. just to, like so you didn't learn python until after you got this job and now you're teaching someone else how to use it yeah so bill is um one of our gis people so he's deaf he's not a programmer he's more of a uh you know somebody that's more in tune with like mapping and things like that so um but ultimately since we we started this routing program i think everybody's sort of seeing the power that this gis system has so we're we're trying to get more and more people and they're building more and more stuff um so that's one project um this one's definitely not a huge priority, but um, we've started working on it a little bit. Um, this is one thing I worked on today. This literally was, uh, I looked at a database. Um, what up? So we use a lot of SQL Server right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have, yeah, no, this is something else I was working on. Um, so this one, for instance, when I was working on this, this was basically um, just a an issue with one particular address um, not showing that two totes for trash cans needed to be picked up. Um, so we, I looked at it, determined this one was something that they needed to do from their end and and their customer facing side of the the program. But mm -hmm. you know that's something if. You know they freak out and can't figure out why um we sort of dive in and then politely tell them you know oh, uh, this is what i'm seeing in the database can you check your end or can we set up a, a conference call to talk through things um and then again like this is a big thing that you know part of the problem when you're dealing like you know so we're dealing with one system talking to another system and we're trying to figure out why are different things getting brought over? Um, so, yeah, we've been playing around with different uh, SQL queries, different, um, you know, troubleshooting with some of the routeware people. So that the job sort of involves a lot of uh, troubleshooting as well. Um, and then also working with third party vendors to continue to troubleshoot issues. Um, so that, you know, that's a, Probably I, I spent some time on that today as well. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the next few things are all part of that route thing that I was building. Um, we track 
constraints or bugs that we're noticing. Um, oh, this is kind of cool here. So we're we're looking at building Outlook add-ins, um, our own third-party add-ins. So uh, essentially, we can email. We have some things where you can set up uh, what's called Microsoft Flow to automate some of the Azure DevOps. But what we're doing is building out a um, Outlook add-on or even potentially an Office add-on where you can simply uh, run the uh, add-on and then you know assign it to um, to the DevOps uh, ticket number or task or things like that. So um, that's a lot of JavaScript. Uh, we thought it was going to be uh, uh, C sharp, but they Microsoft changed to how they set that up. So uh, mm -hmm. for any of the people that might be in the JavaScript uh, program, um, you're going to find that Node in JavaScript is is in a lot of places. Um, this particular project, we're finding it's easier to do a node in JavaScript uh, to build out the uh, add-in and then register the add-in with Microsoft. Um, so that's sort of like a quasi pet project that I'm working on. Um, you know, again, more troubleshooting. Uh, this is something where I had to end up writing a, I fixed it by writing a batch script. And so I'll show you what, batch files look like here. Um, and yes, you will use GitHub. We just mm -hmm. have Azure connected to GitHub. Mm -hmm. So, so I assume this is this is Azure connected to a private GitHub repo? Yes, exactly what it is. Um, okay. So, and it's the same thing you commit. Um, it's just a little easier to commit. I, uh, you know, if you, if anybody's listening is kind of hooked up either Eclipse or visual or uh, code to uh, GitHub. It's sort of the same type of thing. Um, that's the other thing you realize too is finding finding things is might be a little challenging because <laughs> there's so many repos and the code bases are so big. Yeah. Um, oh, here it is. Archive batch topic. So. We were running into this thing where it was essentially like um, we were trying to run like Python files and they were crashing um, using a particular uh, Python that's associated with our GIS system. Mm -hmm. So we had to create a batch system, which is very, if you can tell, it's it's sort of codish, but it's kind of also gets to a lot of like almost you know like the lower like what they would call the lower end programming where it's uh, not as clean and easy to read as like JavaScript or Python. Um, some of the stuff makes sense. Some of it, you know, is very batch programming script specific. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had to, you know, do not be afraid of Googling because I had to learn how to write VB scripts very quickly to send out success and failure emails. Um, <laughs> So that that's sometimes a Tuesday for you is that you're Googling um, a particular weird scripting language to fix a problem mm -hmm. that is tied to, um, you know, a program that you're using. So uh, that that is definitely something that that happens quite a bit. So so, you know, just kind of to give everybody an idea of like, hey, this is, you know, what can happen. Um, you know, on a specific day of the week. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. so let me ask this question. Uh, I see w uh, there's some questions coming in on the chat. I'll get to okay. in a moment. But uh, it seems to me like working for a city government might not be on everyone's mind when they're a software developer. But every city in the country probably has a similar department here. Would you say? Yeah, and it's um, it's. I mean, so South Bend is about one hundred and five thousand people, mm -hmm. um, and so there's three of us on the application developer team, two on the uh, GIS team, and then one supervisor above us. And uh, we also have um, she is uh, she's out of Turkey. She was a Notre Dame student, um, but she's 
what one of our um, fellows or uh, she she's getting funding from a different source to kind of work with us and she does a lot of like our database type work but um so 105,000 people there's six yeah six or seven of us on the developer side gis side um there's probably another dozen on the hardware side of the mm -hmm. it world um and then we have people that kind of deal with like you know just sort of community involvement with technology too that are part of our uh division as well so it's i would say this and i look at this now as like i'm really glad i took the job because mm -hmm. um yeah you you touch so many different languages and have to like uh like what i have on the screen right now is kind of one of the current things i'm working on to do that rerouting so i'm having to create a widget um in javascript that uses a, a library called dojo um so you know it's uh, again you're just kind of diving in and playing around with it and seeing what works seeing what doesn't work um so you're so, it sounds like you're doing quite a bit of googling as well yeah. and asking for ideas and then yeah. and then quite quite frankly the beauty about having a test environment is you can break it over and over and over again uh until you get a desire or a, a nice result um so that's kind of fun too like you really i mean like as uh you know, Karan, the guy I work for, had indicated, it's like, don't worry about learning anything. You can learn on our dime. And they have been 100% on board with that. They've uh, signed us up with uh, different, you know, like plural site packages. And um, we're, you know, some of us are going to be doing tie ins to our local community college to do more like data analytics work and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, if it's, if you're kind of not sure of like what's out there and you're thinking like, oh, I'm just going to build like websites. I mean, um, probably the reality is there's a lot more programming jobs out there that sort of involve like this, where you're dealing with a lot of little different things because, you know, a company the size of, um, you know, like uh, I saw somebody from Nebraska on the logged in. I mean, uh, Mutual Omaha is probably has a lot of different systems that they work with and combine and deal with so they're probably looking for people that'll touch different parts of their applications and um mm -hmm. you know so let me uh can I, let me interrupt yeah. and jump in and say i want to pull some of these questions from the chat what um what things did you do immediately after deciding to switch careers that in your opinion helped you get a job the most um and it's going to sound cheesy, but uh, I believed in myself, like told myself I could do this um, because I think, you know, that's that's number one. If you go in without the confidence in an interview, um, own, you know, own your weaknesses, too. Um, you know, that that's the thing. I mean, um, you, know, you might see different ads saying uh, two, three years of experience. Um, yeah, I think Nick might have been the one that sort of told me aim for those um, because those are going to be ones that are a little bit more accepting of, of people without like a true coding background. So that's number one. Number two, have somebody else look at your resume. Take advantage of those career service office hours. Um, I think they're even open to graduates, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yep. Um, take advantage of those because even if you just, you know, catching a simple typo um, will make it so much better practice um, interviewing just you know find some different questions have uh, have somebody like you one of your classmates one of your co-mates go through the office hours even you know have talk to your spouse about it have them you know, give them a list of questions to ask you so you can just feel like i'm confident going into this um, i will say the one thing that probably helped me and gave me sort of an advantage that I know a lot of people don't have. I spent 15 years arguing the juries, arguing the judges, arguing the clients, arguing things the other side. So I got very polished of having to think on my feet and having to read people and figure out like how a jury is going to react to something I, I was mm -hmm. saying in that moment in time. But you can still do that. Um, and 
you know, try that again with some of your classmates, try forming little groups, try, you know, practicing your questions, because that's what I would do even when I was a lawyer. I would kind of go through not a script because I would otherwise you'd fall in love with it and get thrown off. But, you know, you knew where your objections were going to come in. So I would practice those. Mm -hmm. um, so for the career standpoint, it's the same thing. Just know it's going to take time. Rely on the services that are there. Rely on classmates. Rely on friends. Uh, you know, if you got questions after this, I'm on Slack um, with the, the school. Hit me up. I'll I'll be happy to bounce some stuff off you or take a look at things too. Um, you know, so that that's the number one thing I would say is start by believing in yourself. Start by knowing it's there's going to be some no's. Get okay with rejection. Um, get okay with rejecting. Um, you know, because I know there's a few people where like I'd send my resume and just kind of the way they approach sort of setting up their interview process turned me off right away. Um, you know, I, I've read some horror stories about people having to go through four or five, six cycles. Just that's going to be an indecisive company to work with. Just walk at that point. That'd be my advice. Um, but yeah, believe in yourself, but also know um, you know, rely on services and also know that whatever first job you take as a developer uh, probably won't be your last. And, um, you know, so go in also knowing you're going to add value, but know you're going to have to learn quite a bit um, and make sure you find a place that has that, that mindset that they know you're going to have to learn some things. I, I've got a question I want to add. Yeah. Uh, what you mentioned that your employer was excited you were doing this webinar and they were happy to yep. have you share stuff what why is that why were they excited um so the director of technology is guy dan he's um he's real big with like you know first of all the great thing about him and this is what i tell people try to find somebody like dan to work for is because he he could care less about if you have a degree in tech or if you don't um, he just wants to know that like you're willing to learn, you're okay with like some some level of discomfort um, in the sense of like you might not know the answer to everything, but you're gonna try to find a way to that. Um, he's a big believer that a degree doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be a great programmer. Uh, so right now, when you look at uh, three of us in the office, uh, actually four, um, one guy's got a PhD in physics. I uh, just got tired of the academic route. And then you have me a lawyer, another guy's got a master's degree in English. And one of our GS, GIS guys got started because he was a sewer uh, maintenance worker in the town next to South Bend that uh, um, you know they wanted to do GIS, so he hopped on it. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's why I say believe in yourself. You'd be surprised how many people are in this field that really don't have like that traditional uh, CS degree or yeah, informatics degree. Mm -hmm. um, great, great points. And just to go back to your prior question, I really liked your initial answer to what was the thing that helped you get the job the most? And you said, believe in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's it. You know, it's, um, you know, because I, I also think that saves you from making, uh, you know, like really bad choices in the sense of like, well, they put an offer on the table, I should take it. Well, mm -hmm. maybe, but think it through. <laughs> and again, yeah. think it through believing in yourself and deciding whether or not that that place is worthy of your time and uh, your energy and yeah. uh, the offer is respective of, of where you should be. I mean, you know, I knew I wasn't gonna make lawyer money doing this right away, mm -hmm. um, but you know, they were cool in what they offered that I wouldn't take as great of a pay cut as I thought I would so um but I, I do feel like yeah i mean if you go in with that mindset i know it sounds cheesy but i mean uh, like just know that you can code know that you can uh you can figure things out because you've already been doing it for however long you're in the program um yeah sure you've got mentors and instructors but you know you're still figuring a lot of this stuff out on your own you're still googling stuff you're still re-watching videos five times ever, but you're doing the exact same thing I'm doing now if I have to figure out how to create custom widgets for uh, online ArcGIS 
platforms. So um, you're still going to be in that same boat. So no, you can do it. Uh, great. What about uh, another question from Will? Do you feel that your previous career in law intersects in any way with your career as a software developer? <laughs> Only when my coworkers ask me weird questions of whether or not something they want to do is legal. Um, <laughs> But, you know, quite frankly, no. And I'm glad because I detached myself from it intentionally. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know, like, at some point I could see, like, you know, it'd be really cool to work for a company that does, uh, you know, uh, technical work for legal entities or things of that line. So, you know, I, I think it could help me in that realm, especially with the experience that I've got now. So, uh, it could help me land a job and, you know, because I'd be familiar with a lot of the lingo, a lot of the platforms, things like that. Um, but for the most part, um, I won't say it doesn't completely, you know, intersect in the sense of, yeah, being a lawyer, you really have to learn how to deal with people quite well. And as a software developer, you really have to deal with people. Um, and then the only other kind of thing I would add on that too is um, you would you would lose an audience or a cuss client or a jury real quickly if you ever legalized your argument. So you had to find a way to pitch your argument um, in a legal way that was also very common sense and programming is the exact same way. When you're talking to, in our case, a department or a business unit and you're talking through what you can and can't do, you know, you have to keep it very simple. You don't want to talk about functions and you don't want to talk about, uh, you know, oh, we could probably put this on this platform. You, you're simply, yeah, we can we can make a button that'll do that. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. you just get the magic behind the scenes. Yeah, I know um, when you were considering this role around that time we spoke and I think you shared that at a point in time, at that point in time, there were three openings in your yes. department. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about that? I mean, that's a relatively small department to have three openings. I think yeah, it might be helpful so, for people to hear about that. Sure. So the timing of it, um, again, I think it's the, the department's kind of accepted what it is. It's it's a platform for sort of giving you all these like chances to work on a lot of languages and a lot of different software. And then all of a sudden that makes you very valuable to other companies and other entities. Um, and again, there's a lot of chaos with, with this particular job in the sense of we're not working on like, uh, for instance, uh, Dr. Rob and Nick work for Choice Hotels. And it was a very, um, you know, orderly kind of thing that you're working on um, in the sense of you knew sort of like you, you had certain systems and they were all kind of geared towards one end goal. Um, and versus this where it's like, you have a lot of other systems that other people built, but you need to build things on top of them. Um, so you learn quite a few systems, you learn quite a few, um, you know, things like Azure, things like agile development, things like, you know, just, uh, DevOps in general, on top of learning Python and strengthening your JavaScript. Um, and then, you know, even now we're looking at doing a particular food truck app that, um, serves a legal purpose, but also we're trying to make it more interactive. So um that's going to serve kind of like um a different you know also it's like a president a purpose as well but uh we we're looking at building that in android um and ios so i would take the android side and do it in java so mm -hmm. yay first chance i get to use my java knowledge for it um <laughs> but yeah so it there's times where it's like oh my god what am i doing today because i there's a lot of different things you're touching um so it's a it's a job that I think a lot of people accept that it's two to four years and then you're going on elsewhere mm -hmm. um, and then they're repeating the process and unfortunately for them they just had within a two month span three people that moved up salary wise or were able to get like better positions uh, money wise or just you know able to relocate and things like that so um, they were a bit panic mode and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I took advantage of that and, <laughs> you know, basically said, yeah, you know, let's, uh, you know, that salary at the entry level is a little, uh, little low. Maybe we could do a little bit better on that. So, um, 
but yeah, it was uh, it was kind of weird for them to be in that spot. It was the first time, but I mean, the job market is just so on fire. Um, and, you know, unfortunately too, it's like the the building that the city's house in is run by the county that we live in. And it's, it's pretty run down. And I mean, I was already familiar with it. So that was one of the things Dan was thrilled about. He's like, I don't have to try to like, talk away this sort of rundown building and he's like because you were down the other side of the hall from it mm -hmm. um but yeah i, I just okay. think it's uh it's it's a great starting spot for the for for my development career but it's long term i could see me saying i, I would eventually want to move into like working on one or two major projects for like an entity or something like that yeah uh, another good question from Will. Was it a requirement that you work in a job that had a broad variety of projects and tech stack? No. Um, no, I, I just, I took it on because uh, I actually talked to one of the ladies that was leaving the position to go be a software developer for Notre Dame. Um, and she said that exact same thing that I was just talking about that. The people are great. It's a great way to learn a lot of different things, but um, you will you're, you'll you'll find this few things where you're you're really focused on tech wise in this department, um, and then you'll have to let other things sort of be weak areas for you. Um, but I the other places I was really the one place I was really interested in interviewing with uh, was a. Uh, um, Oh gosh, what was the name of that company? Now? Was it was it Plaid? Plaid, yes, thank you. Um, so they they are like a one sort of uh, company that just does like one thing, and that's connect uh, banks with like third party uh, web apps that are like doing financing, loans, things like that. And I remember going through a couple rounds of interviews with them, and I was kind of set up for my last one and uh decided on the city job but that one was going to be really cool um and i really kind of i think i pitched it to a couple of students to try to talk to the person i was talking to because um it's it's uh you're basically working with an api and other developers troubleshooting issues that their system is having talking to the play out api um and again, you get a chance to work on different languages, like their big ones uh, are Java, um, Python, and JavaScript. Um, but they do have that API in other languages. So if anybody's kind of like, you know, thinking about a, a company to work for, um, they checked a lot of boxes for me, but I think ultimately I settled on the, hey, I'm making a huge change and I really like these people over here and I've known them for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, who knows, maybe in a few years, that'll be, I'll try that, try that route with them again. So did your coworkers know, um, cause you worked on the same floor as the people you're working with now, did they know you were going through the boot camp? Did you talk to them about it? As oh yeah. Going through? yeah. 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 I had to sign paperwork about having a second job as a mentor for the boot camp. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was, uh, they, you know, in fact, it was like, uh, when I took the full-time developer job, I mean, everybody was like, yeah, that's not shocking. Um, so yeah, they, they were well aware. Uh, that was part of the reason that my assignment, one of my assignments was innovation and technology and then mm -hmm. um, the fire department, because believe it or not, they deal with a lot of like technical contracts and things like that. So yeah, so everybody was pretty aware of my, mm -hmm. my interest in it. I think they knew it more than me apparently for some time. Couple, couple more questions, and if, if there's more questions, uh, if you guys have more questions, please put them in the chat. Another question is, uh, thanks for sharing your story. Do you plan to work for the city of South Bend for a long time, or do you have plans to seek a position elsewhere once you've gained enough experience? Um, you know, I'll never say never, um, but at the same token, it, it feels like a two to four year fit for me. Um, you know, just because I, I think monetarily you can do better um in the software developer roles change so much so much of it's remote um and then quite frankly uh i love the fact that i'm learning python we're uh really really diving into that and then also we're getting ready to 
try building our first graph database uh, using Neo4j. And that's going to be a pretty huge project, like one of those, you know, real big resume standout things. Um, so, you know, that's that's a kind of a, a, a neat little industry to be into is places that are using graph uh, databases like Netflix does it. Uh, Amazon uses quite a few of them. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some of the decision making databases are. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I'd say two to four years. Um, feel like I'm in a good spot where, you know, I, I could start trying to see what else is out there. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, talk about time management? Because you went through the boot camp uh, and you had a full time job. And it sounds like now that you're in a full time job, you're still, well, I know you're still mentoring for us. You're involved in our data engineering program. And I have a feeling you might be learning on your own outside of all that a little bit. I, I am. Um, I still probably put in like, you know, the cool thing is that the job, like they'll, they're cool with me taking an hour or two, you know, working on like some Python just to improve my skills or whatnot and watching mm -hmm. some videos. But I, I still do a few different things um, that are kind of outside the uh, current uh, work realm, um, you know, as far as learning uh, like AWS or some of the other cloud management uh, or, you know, cloud services that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as managing time, you know, part of it is I just sort of accepted that sometimes things are going to get pushed to the side and I'm not going to get as much time as I want on certain things. But ultimately, it's still, uh, you know, if you get to with an employer that allows you some learning time, take advantage of it big time. Uh, it's nothing cooler than getting paid to, to do, you know, to continue to learn. Uh, but also just, you know, break things up. Um, you know, find a way if you only got 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, uh, I would take my lunch break sometimes and take my laptop to a nice little spot and work on some, uh, videos and things like that for about 30 minutes, um, while I ate my lunch. So mm -hmm. it's, um, yeah, I would say, well, uh, it was, it's, you're going to have to break it up. I think, uh, I don't know if it's still out there or not, but I think I put like what my sort of weird, like breakdown schedule was for people to kind of give a, an outline of like, if you're working a full-time job, here's how you can find it to 15 to 20 hours a weekend. And um, you can do it. It's, it's tough. Um, you know, sometimes you have to wake up an hour earlier or go to bed an hour later, but it's uh, definitely some priority stuff there that uh, you just write it down and let your, you know, look at it and know that, okay, no matter what, I'm going to accomplish this today and just make sure that that happens. Yeah, so I think you're referring to your weekly schedule spreadsheet, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so I was just working on that uh, today or yesterday. That is part of our week zero orientation that all students uh, are required to, to use your schedule as a model. Cool. Uh, and submit that as an assignment. Uh, oh, nice. Them, to help them stay on track. Yeah, we added um, we added a new couple a, a new field. Um, uh, I learned recently that if you write down where you're going to do something and when you're going to do it, the chances of you doing it go way up. So we added a new huh. location field to that. That's spreadsheet. pretty cool. So if anyone on the call wants to see that, uh, it's in the week zero orientation course. Um, let me, uh, last question. So I know you've worked with a lot of students over the last year. Is there some piece of advice that you've, you've wanted to give to students, but maybe you didn't feel comfortable giving unsolicited advice? Uh, now's your chance to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know I probably shouldn't say this too much, but um, the, uh, you know, it's okay if you try this and you realize it's not for you. Um, you know, I, it's coding's a, a, an interesting thing. It's like um, there's a lot of troubleshooting, a lot of problem solving, a lot of headaches, a lot of fun, especially if you enjoy just building out ideas. Um, but at the same token, you know, just kind of like I should have listened to my 
you know, my mind and my heart years ago about being a lawyer, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things that if you go through and you find you're not sure, well, I'd still tell you, take a job in it and see what you think. Um, I know there's a, one of the students I worked with, Logan, he's working, I think, as a data analyst or something, if I'm not mistaken. So there's a lot of crossover with coding that, um, you know, ends up being sort of coding, but also more about explaining, you know, what things do. Um, you know, you can get into project management, you can get into like pro uh, product management, um, you know, that's technical, but at the same token, uh, it's not necessarily coding, but definitely give it a shot because um, I do feel like it can lead to other things that, uh, you know, are sort of coding related, but aren't necessarily like, you know, the day in, day out sort of coding stuff if you're not sure about it. Um, you know, I know we have a team of business analysts that all know how to do Python, but they spend most of their time, you know, analyzing data and building out Power BI dashboards. Um, and then, talking to people about what the data means. And a couple of them actually have like computer science degrees. So, um, you know, just know that this can take you in a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. Great, that's awesome. I appreciate you taking the time, Jeff. Yeah. Um, this event, we did this in conjunction with uh, Ozarks Technical Community College. So if you are, I know a lot of people on the call now are already in the program. But if you happen to be watching this, I, I just like to put up on the screen uh, if I can fix my monitor here. Uh, let me stop sharing for a moment. And I'm going to bring up the landing page for Ozarks Technical Community College so that if you would like more information, uh, you can go there. One moment. Mm -hmm. It's funny, the moment you need the Zoom share screen, it goes away. Okay, hold on. Uh, desktop two. Okay, here we go. So if you go to promineotech.com OTC coding boot camps, uh, you can find out more information about our 18 week coding boot camps. Uh, you can take an assessment here. Like Jeff said, find out if it's a good fit for you or at least start to explore that and take a look at upcoming dates. And yeah, you can find out more here, promineotech.com, OTC coding bootcamps. But just wanna say thanks again to Jeff, uh, not only for taking the time to do this, but Jeff, you've, you've been involved uh, in many, many different ways uh, in this bootcamp since you took it yourself over a year ago and graduated as a, as a mentor, as a curriculum advisor, uh, as a graduate, as sort of an all-around supporter and booster. So uh, it's been great. Uh, we, we, we went through the boot camp at the same time. So it's been mm -hmm. great to be on this journey with you and follow and see you know, you, where this has led you. It's been awesome. And yeah, just, just thanks for being awesome and again, uh, giving back to this community. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me and I think like I know a few of the students I worked with that I saw on the participants list so um, you know if I, I definitely um, if you haven't used the mentor system use the mentor system for people that uh, watch the recordings use the office hours um, even if you know even if you spend the time just hashing out a problem in that mentor session um, definitely it helps you as a coder it helps you as a developer and then it just you know, gives you the chance to know that you're not alone in your frustrations. So um, definitely take advantage of all it has to offer. Feel free to hit me up on the Slack channel if you have any questions. Um, you know, I'm definitely willing to help. If anybody has any interest in relocating to South Bend, Indiana, uh, <laughs> I would be more than happy to walk you through the process of getting a, develop, a developer job with the city. So. Um, you know, that, uh, keep that in the back of your mind. I mean, we are close to Chicago, so that's always nice. Great. That's awesome. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Okay. And, Thanks uh, everybody. We'll, we'll talk soon. Have a good night, right. everyone. Bye everybody.